mighty Jesus. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah! You may have your seat in the presence of God. Greetings to you all in Jesus' name. My name is Jamila, and I am from Mauritius Island. First of all, I would like to thank God Almighty, my mentor, Prophet TB Joshua, and my mom and the Lord, Pastor Evelyn Joshua, for making this possible. Yes, I am a product of grace, and all glory be to God. Hallelujah. My humble journey to the Synagogue Church of All Nations started a few years ago. Despite the vicissitudes of life, as a young lady, I was driven with passion and hunger for God. This quest for God led me to discover a great prophet of our time, Prophet T.B. Joshua. As I continue to research this prophet of God, I found a wealth of information about him. And by divine revelation, through the Holy Spirit, I was convinced that he was God sent to this generation. I wanted to be part of what God was doing here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I left my country for Nigeria. And glory be to God, Upon my arrival here, oh Jesus, I knew this was where I belong. And to my greatest surprise, my first encounter with the man of God, he stretched out his anointed hands towards me, and with a voice of solid assurance, he asked me, would you like to become my daughter? And before I could say anything, he added calmly, I am ready to be your father. I will take care of you as my own daughter. <laughs> Me, I was stiff, as if I had seen an angel, because there are no natural words to describe him, this great man of God. This was how I was welcomed to be mentored and tutored under this great ministry. Daddy's love knew no bound. His words became an inspiration and motivation. I mean, they were the very principles and foundation upon which I was built. They encouraged me and brought me to a rich fulfillment to where I am today. This great man of God came down to my level and constantly reminded me that God will use you for his glory to preach the good news and touching lives positively. Me, I have no special skills, no educational excellence, but to the glory of God, here I am today on this great altar at the Arena of Liberty at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. As I stand here, I recall the noble word of my mentor, my father, my coach, my counselor. He said, believe me, my daughter, one day you will stand here and preach the word of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Trust me. People of God, I boldly assert that there is a generation of inspired preachers and workers in God's vineyard, especially here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. We have a great woman of God, a visioner who inspires and motivates under the conduct and check of the Holy Spirit, a dream builder and a wonderful mother in person of Pastor Evelyn Joshua. She has proven beyond doubt that strength, faith, courage, and boldness are the unique blessings of God through which you can always approach any situation. 
she demonstrates that even amid of trials, tribulations, and persecutions of all kinds, you can find courage in things that are discouraging. Why is it? Because when you trust Jesus Christ, you can never go wrong. I mean, you will never be confounded in time or eternity. People of God, with all due reverence, let us appreciate our mother and the Lord, Pastor Evelyn Joshua. Thank you, Jesus, for the life of my mother. Hallelujah. Once again, you're all welcome in Jesus' mighty name. I want to start with a quote of a man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, that gives me strength each time I am faced with a difficult situation. It says, God visits his people with hard times so that they may learn his way. Though hard to the ungodly man is desirable and profitable because it leads us to safety into eternal life. Hallelujah. As I matured in my Christian faith, my prayer life also matured. When hard times and challenges of life hit me, I stopped praying to God to remove the trials from my life. I stopped praying to God to move a mountain before me instead. I began to ask God to give me strength to overcome my trials, to give me strength to conquer my challenges. I have learned to ask God to give me strength to face my tribulations, to learn from them, and to be victorious in the midst of trials. So this will bring me to my message today, titled, The Real Value of Trials. Tell your neighbor, the real value of trials. Yes, it is very important that you and I know the real value of our trials. If not, we will find ourselves running away from the very things that are meant to speak strength and courage into your lives. If gold must be gold, it must pass through a furnace. It must be refined. So also, our character must be tested and refined in the furnace of trials, tribulations, and challenges before we can step into a new level in life. The situation you're in right now is to refine you. You need to know the value of your trial. Once you know the value of a trial, you will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No one is ready-made before God got him. The apostles in the Bible, none of them were brought from the palace. Once you know the value of your trial, Overcoming it becomes so easy. Now, God uses the metaphor of gold being refined and purified to picture the process of repenting and uprooting of sins in our lives. Why is this metaphor used? God chose us in the raw state, an unrefined chunk of gold, still covered with impurities of all sort. Psalm 40, verse 2 says that he brought us out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay. I want to share with you the three major steps of gold refining according to the Old Testament time. And you know that our God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he still uses the same process to refine us and to remove impurities in our lives, in our heart and character. Step one, crushing, pounding, and shattering. What God requires is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That is, a repentant and penitent spirit in reference to Psalm 34, verse 18. Step two, the washing away of dirt. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. The washing process is done repeatedly to remove unwanted elements. In the same way, we need to wash ourselves repeatedly, 
with the precious blood of Jesus Christ to remove all impurities. Now, my favorite step. Step three, the blazing furnace, heat of trials, the most painful part of a process. This step exposes hidden impurities in raw gold with intense heat of 1,064 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine how hot the furnace is? Exactly. This is the intensity of heat you need to refine you from your sinful state. Just as in gold, heat of trials pushes impurities and ungodly character to the surface. Then, the refiner, God Almighty, scoops out all the impurities and everything that is ungodly in our hearts. Isaiah 48, 10 says, Behold, I have refined you in the furnace of affliction. It is that very furnace I am talking about, where God works fully to extract the debris of Satan's nature from our character. God Almighty disciplines us, corrects us, refines us through hard times, through afflictions, through things that we didn't want to go through. Tell to your neighbor, the heat is necessary. Say it again, but with joy, the heat is necessary. Uh, I am seeing a lot of people saying it with a frown on their faces. I know that no one likes intense heat. We don't like it. But my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, cheer up. The kind of heat I am talking about is to launch you into another realm of glory if you endure in submission and obedience. Now, in order not to give up during the refining process, we must keep the refiner's perspective. I mean, to see our situation through the eyes of Jesus Christ. When you do so, you will see that at the end of your trials lies your testimony, that at the end of your pain lies gain, and that at the end of your mess lies your miracles. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, tells us that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. To be like Christ Jesus is the ultimate goal of all Christians. Now, impurities distort the reflection of a refiner. So sins in our hearts distort the reflection of Jesus Christ in our lives. But on the contrary, a pure heart mirrors the character and the image of Jesus Christ. Prophet TV Joshua says, beautiful people are those who mirror Christ. Let the beauty of Christ be seen in you. Hallelujah. Children of God, let us appreciate the real value of our trials. Some people see trials, tribulation or challenges as poison that kills one happiness, desire and zeal to move forward in life. But to a man of faith, a man of vision and purpose, trials, tribulation or challenges are a tonic that make the spiritual life to grow and a driving force to a higher aspiration in life. We all know it. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 2, tells us to consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, each time you're faced with trials of many kind, because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Whatever you're going through right now are tests to mature you. Hard times can touch you, but they cannot destroy you. Hallelujah. Now, as Christians, the more hard times you experience, the better equipped you are for the future. I repeat, as Christians, the more hard times you experience, the better equipped you are for the future. Now, trial is also compared 
to a thorn in the flesh. In nature, thorn plays a vital role. It is not a mistake of creation. For example, the thorn of a rose make it stronger and prevent the rose from unwanted predators. In the same way, thorns in our flesh makes us stronger and they are ultimately providing us the necessary fuel to reach to our destination and they prevent us from being conceited. Now let us open our Bible in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, from verse 7 to 10. I read, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Verse 8, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times, but it might depart from me. Verse 9, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have become a fool in boasting. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commanded by you. For in nothing was I behind the most eminent apostles, though I am nothing. Truly, the signs of an apostle were accomplished amongst you with all perseverance in signs and wonders and mighty deeds in Jesus' mighty name. The apostle Paul said that he had a thorn in his flesh from the pit of hell. But people of God, pay attention. It was in that very thorn that God manifested his strength. Apostle Paul knew the value of his challenges, trials, tribulations. He knew the value of it because he knew that they were to correct him from being proud. Most of times, God responds to a request of character change and greater holiness, not by providing us with better circumstances, but by providing us with what? Trials, tribulations, sickness and disease. Prophet T.B. Joshua made it clear by saying, sometimes God uses hard times to draw us to himself so that we may take our proper position in him. I repeat, he say, God sometimes uses hard times to draw us to himself so that we may take our proper position in him. Hallelujah. It is for trials and temptation that we acquire the necessary experience and maturity to handle whatever responsibility given unto us. One example in the Bible is Joseph. It is the hard times he experienced in the dry pit, Potiphar's house and the prison that make him fit for the position in the royal court of Egypt. Jesus Christ learned obedience through the things he suffered. So whatever situation you're going through right now might be painful, but it serves for a purpose of cleansing as Christian. There's need to prepare you, and pleasure cannot do that. It is only trials. So my dear brothers and sisters, stop running away from the thing that will bring strength into your life. Hallelujah. Now, he who desires triumph or victory must be ready to embrace war because triumph or victory is a product of warfare. Trials and temptations are the soil in which the man of faith flourishes. Life is in stages, a time to be born, a time to grow, a time to face persecution, a time to overcome, and a time 
to show the proceeds of victory. Now, let us rejoice in the midst of our trials. Joseph was able to serve in the prison because he had inner joy in him. If Joseph's heart were troubled, he would not have survived in the prison. To sum up, let us really appreciate the real value of our trials and honor God before men in the midst of our trial. But above all, take hold of your heart in the furnace of afflictions. Once you can control your heart, you control your life. And people of God, you know very well how to control your heart. Prophet T.B. Joshua gave us the secret. He blessed us with it, and you know how to do it. Oh, Holy Spirit, take more of me and give me more of you. Meditating day and night, that is how you will take control of your heart. Hallelujah. I believe that you're all blessed in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up for a short prayer and join me in one accord in Jesus' name. Say with me, you trial, I will not because of you change my focus. You trial, I will not because of you change my direction. You trial, I will not because of you change my confession. I know, I know. God is still saying something through you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. I pray that the mighty Jesus Christ bless his word in the midst of your heart. You are all blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God is with us.